Now those of you who follow my videos know that I've been after a deep, deep, deep detector. I have had two or three under consideration for about four months and I've made a decision. And the decision that I've made may shock quite a few people. I won't tell you which ones I had under consideration. That's not fair to the people who I was talking to, but... Oh, I can't think of anything to say. I'm just going to show you it. This is what I've decided to get for my inland sites where there's deep coins. Some people might think I'm crazy, but... It's a Garrett ATX. Yep, it is suited to gold fields and beaches and underwater use. But I will be using it underwater. I will be using it in rivers. And I'm really, really hoping that this thing can make some of my worked out sights come alive. I know that it's good on small hammered coins in pasture. People have informed me of what they found. I've been talking to a few people who own this machine in the UK and they've showed me what they've found, they've told me what they've found, so I've no reason not to believe them. A lot of the videos that I saw on other machines, I didn't really believe what the people were finding or how deep the machine was going. This one I did. PI machines are going to go deep. They're going to do well on mineralized sites. Have I got mineralized sites? I don't know. Never had a problem with depth, so I maybe haven't. But I'm hoping that this lad will do me proud. And it does go bigger than this, don't worry. Now this is a real leap of faith buying this. Because I haven't seen any videos of anybody using them in the UK. As far as I know, I'm going to be the first making videos for the ATX in the UK, which is a world away from the gold fields of America and Australia. And the sites I have are a world away from the beaches as well. There you go. He's a big lad. He's a heavy lad as well. Let's see how he gets on with the first hunt. Okay, first hunt with the ATX. First thing I need to do is the frequency scan. Coil it about waist height. Frequency scan pressed. Light goes backwards and forwards here for what seems like an age. That's it, done. So it's picked a good operating frequency. Right, so now I need to ground balance it. I need to press the shift button and then hold the ground balance button whilst pumping it up and down. It'll make noise and when it goes quiet, it's ground balanced. Quiet. That's it, ground balanced. Ready to hunt. Now where have I got sensitivity? I've got an 11. Factory preset is 10. I'm going to go with 11 because on a little test hunt that I did in my backfield, that seemed to run quite stable and it was pulling little bullet heads up from quite a good depth. Here we've got a nice, faint, possibly deep signal. Nothing else around it. I'm going to go over here. High low. High low. High low. That's the sort of signal I'm looking for. Press the iron check. Which is silent. That means it's a diggable target. Doesn't mean to say it's not iron. It could be very deep, small iron. Now we need to pinpoint. Hold the pinpoint button. And the target is here. Because it's the first one, I'm going to do a live dig. Now 
And that looks like some sort of curtain hook or something. Brass or copper. Give a decent signal. That was only down about three or four inches, but it's a good start. It wasn't iron. Here's another signal. It's quite a faint high-low signal. When I pinpointed the lights on here only came halfway, which would probably make me think that it's either a very small target or it's deep. <laughs> We've got a small lump of iron. I think that might be the first of many. Taking the headphones out to let you listen to that, it's a nice high low, high low, but when I do the iron check, it changes to low high. Not sure how well you can hear that, but it definitely changes from high low to low high. It doesn't have any crackling associated with it. So I'm hoping that this is a good target. Now I know the iron check isn't 100%, but it does eliminate the bigger, shallower iron targets. I'm hoping this one isn't an iron target, but time will tell. <laughs> it's a tiny little piece of foil. Bit of a mixed response from this one. Seem to go high low, high low. Could be that there's two targets, could be that it's a long piece of trash deep, I don't know. But it's gonna get do. Well we're already down about six inches or so. And that looks like a lot of iron in the ground. Well, it is a big lump of iron, but the machine told me that it was possibly a big, long lump of trash. Which it is. Where the hell am I going to put that? <laughs> this is a very strong signal. High, low, high. High, low, high. Both ways. <sighs> iron check says it isn't iron. But it lied. Another lump of iron. Gave a lovely signal that one. There was no crackling or grunting or anything when I did the iron check both ways. Not to worry. Oh, I was excited there for a minute. That's a low high signal when low high, low high. Did iron check, it's buzzing like a beast. So it's not gonna get dug. Right, here we go, another low high signal, sorry, high low signal, <laughs> went over it with iron check, went silent, pinpoint says it's here, and the gauge went all the way up, which makes me think it's either shallow or big. But I'm going to dig deep, just in case. Always dig deep. Well, at least there's something here this time. And it's a little lump of iron, which isn't very interesting. Another nice low high signal. Need new batteries in my pin pointer. That's strange. There's a lump of coke here. When I passed it over the coil, it didn't make a sound. The pinpointer picks it up. It says there's something in this hole. 
doesn't pick the cork up. Uh, God knows what's in here. Well, at least I hope he does, because I don't. And I'm going to have a right old tussle getting it out with a knackered pinpointer. Ah, why didn't I bring a spare battery? Aha! A long spike, a metal spike. Probably a tent peg. In fact, it does seem to have a bit of a spiral cut on it like some of them do, so they go in the ground better. Oh well, at least it was a target. I wasn't digging for nothing. You know, I'm thinking about it. This site, I've absolutely hammered it with the Deus. The e track Vista Gold, there's been a Euro Ace on it. There's been all sorts on here over the last couple of years. It took me two hours just to find two coins with the e track and they were tiny little sixpences. So with a new detector, on a really hammered out site, I'm not surprised I haven't found anything so far. I've been here probably a good hour and I'm digging iron, but even though I'm digging iron, there's still hardly any signals in the ground here. This will be the place where I find gold, a gold coin. I've already found gold over the other side of the river and that was the gold ring that the lady who owns this land has lost, or had lost, <laughs> about 12 years ago, but I must have pulled five, six hundred coins up from this little field and it's only an acre and a half, not very big, from top to bottom maybe it's 300 meters and at its widest point 40 meters, it's a very small site, it tapers right down as well, I must have had 40, 50 silvers, so if I don't know, five, six hundred copper coins, 40 or 50 silvers, there has to be the odd sovereign and the odd half sovereign somewhere in here. It's very sandy, grainy soil and what I think's happened is the heavy coins, i.e. the gold, has just sunk out of reach of my old, older detectors, the Deus and the e track and that's why I've got this fella. It's to hit that gold, to hit the deep coins that the other detectors don't have a chance of hitting. I have had coins down to about 13 inches in here and that was, let's think, the deepest one was a Norwegian 1-0 from 1736 or something like that and that was way down. It's a big coin, about the size of a big old penny, possibly a little bit thicker and that was a good dig, good signal, good dig. This fella would have eaten that for breakfast if there's coins that deep, there'll be coins deeper. Ordinary coinage I've had probably down to 12 inches. That's your half pennies and pennies. It's still a good depth, but it's nice, free-drained soil. I would expect to hit the deeper ones if they're, if they're there with this lad. I'm going to have to go through a lot of iron to hit those deep coins and all that. This was a low-high signal. Pressed iron check. Went over it again, changed to high-low. And it still gave quite a good response. No crackling whatsoever. I pinpointed it and it says it's here. Now apparently low high are high conductors so I'm expecting copper if it's a coin, if it's not iron. <laughs> Bent nail. That gave a lovely response. I know these PI machines love iron. And I didn't even know there was as much iron here. In fact, this little pouch is becoming so heavy with iron, I'm going to leave it there because it's starting to pull me pants down. I'll come back and get it if I get a good signal. Well, I think that might be one of my last holes because it's starting to get dark. I don't wish to hunt on into darkness, I'm not desperate. I do love detecting, but I'm not addicted to it. So, 
then have a slow mosey on back to where I left my finds pouch because my pocket's starting to fill up with rusted iron. Hopefully I'll dig something good on the way back. But if not, and before it gets too dark, I shall give you my initial thoughts on the ATX. The machine performed okay. I dug a hell of a lot of iron that I didn't even know was on this site. I underestimated the amount of iron on this site. Uh, and this was hopefully going to be my golden site where this lad was going to punch down way deep drag the stuff up that the Deus and the E-Track had missed didn't happen today <laughs> but it's the first proper hunt that I've done with this machine all I can say is this site it has great potential I'm not sure whether this is the machine to exploit that potential it may be but didn't find any coins in about three hours maybe that's nothing unusual though because the last time I was here for two hours with two detectors at the same time and I only found two small sixpences this site has been bashed and bashed hard and if anybody's wondering all these bits of soil here aren't off my digs they're off moles it's absolutely infested with moles Sometimes they bring the stuff to the top, sometimes they take it down. It's potluck. Today, didn't find any coins. Did find a lot of tiny little bullets down to about four inches, which is not too bad. But I haven't found enough to make any sort of judgment about how good the machine is. I really should have brought a couple of coins, maybe it's a half penny, a sixpence, a penny. Maybe it's even a sovereign or two. Bury them deep in this sort of soil and see just how deeply it will pick them up. From videos I've seen, I knew it will get down there, but uh, today it was rather frustrating. On really mineralized sites, and this doesn't seem to be mineralized sites, I think it would punch a lot deeper than your ordinary machines. On here, so far, I'm undecided. I'm going to give it a go at the mansion site because I don't think there's much iron in certain areas there. There is a few different places where I went last time with the E-Track, with the 13 inch coil, and I got away from the parts that were pretty contaminated, and I did go deep, I did find George the second, third, and fourth coinage, down to about 10 inches or so. I can't remember digging any iron, but I tend not to with the E-Track. Doesn't mean to say it wasn't there, because as I say, I've tuned my ears out from here and iron with those machines. This fella might go and pull up nothing but iron, but time will tell. So enough of me talking about what I hope this machine can do. I might as well run through some of the features on it. All the buttons are easily accessible here. It's reasonably well balanced, although it is heavy. With the strap provided, it does take 90% of the weight off. Swinging it's no problem at all. As I say, I've been here approximately three hours and I don't feel any sort of strain in my shoulders or arms. I'm really, really, really looking forward to using this underwater because I like snorkeling. Just imagine that fella underwater. Be awesome. Absolutely awesome. I love the idea how it folds down. Really small. Look at that. Stick that in a case, nobody's going to know you've got a detector. So I like how it's really robust. I like how you can just jet wash the blooming thing if you want to get it clean because it's waterproof. That's a big bonus. I like the idea you can adjust this, the armrest, to make it more comfortable so you've got more or less distance between the rest and the handle. I love the idea how it folds up, collapses like this. There you go. It's made of a really nice material, hard wearing, impact resistant. Then again, these were originally made for the US Army. What I don't like is the full coil cover that comes with these. Yes, it will protect the coil, and I should have had it on really, but I'm hunting pasture, so it's not that important. Will protect it, but with it being solid, means you're going to catch 
grass seeds and all sorts of crap in here. It's just going to collect it all. So I'm actually going to order an open one, which only covers where it needs to cover. So any grass seeds, grass heads, any crap that you hit and flips over the top into here, just going to fall straight out the bottom. It's a much better idea. This is the Garrett headphones. Compared to the ones that came with the E-Track, these aren't the best, but they're better than nothing. And I've noticed when you've got the headphones on, you can hear the fainter signals much, much better. You can hear the buzzing on the iron when you do the iron check better as well. So I would say headphones are essential. Not necessarily these ones, but headphones are essential. I just don't like, they just feel cheap. And considering the cost of this detector, that's a bit of a cop out. And that I don't think would take much punishment. They're okay, don't get us wrong, they're definitely better than nothing. But I think I'll be upgrading the headphones pretty soon. Same sort of sketch with the back of the machine. You've got a little cap there with an O-ring. And when that's screwed on, that's totally waterproof. There you go, look at that. Military spec. It's got to do well in some of my sites. I've got so many different types of land. One of the types of land is going to be excellent for it. And in fact, I did have a couple of short hunts out the back of my place on pasture. Again, it's deep pasture. And it did really well. I didn't dig much iron. Dug a bit of lead. And I dug a pistol musket ball down to about 10 inches. And that gave a good signal. And that's something smaller than the... Yeah, about the size of the, the nail on my little finger. A little bit of lead down to 10 inches gave a good signal. Still haven't found any coins with it. And this will be about 4 hours in. So, so far... I do like using it. Yes, I've dug more iron in three hours than I've dug in the last year with the E-Track. But I'm really hoping this will help me to find gold that's out of the reach of the E-Track and out of the reach of the Deus. This will help me to find stuff when I'm on holiday, because at the moment I'm using a Vibrotector 730, which is a little handheld PI machine. This is going to do so much better. I go on a couple of holidays a year and hopefully this is going to find me some gold when I'm out. Now I think in the next video I'll run through the features of this, what comes with it and what I think of it as a package. I've given you my thoughts of what I think of it here today for this three hour session. It would seem to find the targets okay. Unfortunately most of them are iron. Now I'm sure there is good stuff out there on my sites that I just can't get to with the E-Track and Deus. I don't know whether this fella will find them, but I'm going to have fun finding out. I did have fun today. The thing that kind of ruined it for me a little bit was not having good batteries in my probe. That freaking out meant I had a fanny on. I don't know how people work without a probe. I'm going to bring both probes next time because I do have a replacement, but it's way up in the van. I just couldn't be bothered to go and get it. In hindsight, I should have. But I did enjoy using this for the first hunt. And I'm going to enjoy using it for the second hunt as well. Maybe if I get 10 hunts in and I'm finding nothing but iron, I won't enjoy it so much. But time will tell. <laughs> Thanks very much to everybody that watches the videos. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. If you've liked the video, click like. If you haven't liked it, click dislike. <laughs> Still counts as a view. Thanks very much, and I shall see you next time.